This is TV18. And you're watching CNBC TV18. Young Turks, brought to you by Hyundai Eon. Ab hua na India on. Welcome to Young Turks, I'm Shireen Bhana. As we celebrate 11 years of the show, we bring you another masterclass on what it takes to scale up, build a team, create a brand and delight customers. From a fixed landline to a smartphone, from 2G to 3G and now 4G, the telecom industry in India is on the cusp of the second wave of growth. In the words of Sam Petroda, the pioneer of India's telecom revolution, the Indian industry is going through change, chaos and confusion. But at the end of what seems like a tumultuous period, we will see a more networked and better connected India. But Petroda also held out a warning. Indian telcos must not follow the single-minded obsession of merely adding subscribers. They must also build an ecosystem of developers and applications and create a value-added service network to address India's needs. First phase of telecom revolution has ended. We have 900 million phones. We are a nation of a connected billion. That whole ramping up and all the excitement is beginning to end. When that happens, there is always consolidation, confusion, concerns. That's part of life. Everyone essentially focused on increasing number of subscribers yeah. because that's how they got their valuation up. That story is over. We are going through a very interesting phase in telecom because the second part of telecom revolution is about to begin. Well, that hopefully will be the future of Indian telecom. So we decided to team up with NASCOM and put Jay Menon, the group CIO of Bharti Enterprises, India's largest provider of mobile telephony, in the hot seat. A graduate from IIT Delhi with a PhD from Cornell University, Jay Menon, the group CIO of Bharti Enterprises, can also boast of having completed executive management programs at Harvard, Wharton and Sloan. Jay found his calling in the telecom industry and after working with AT&T in the US, he joined Bharti Enterprises in 2002. Responsible for building strategic alliances with global majors like IBM, Google, Microsoft and Apple, Jay is now tapping into industry trends and working on shifting the focus at Bharti from voice to data. Hi, I'm Amit Ped, founder of Delight Circle. I'm here to meet Mr. Jay Menon and my question to him is how is location-based app space going to evolve in India? For years, consumers have been bombarded by promotional SMSs, emails and newspaper ads from local retailers and brands. Founded by Amit Baird and Ravi Teja Doda, People Tech Ventures app Delight Circle strives to change all that, so no more push-based marketing. This free Android, Blackberry and web app lets consumers see all stores in the range of one kilometer and aggregates retail offers, coupons and loyalty card information. I'm Rahul Shetty from um, Global Delight. I'm participating in the CNBC Young Turks tutorial to know from Dr. Jay Menon what is the future of the App Store model. With the rise of social networks and mobile devices, there are a large number of videos shared on the web every minute. While this is true, video editing has always been left to the tech-savvy professionals. 31-year-old Rahul Shetty, product manager at Global Delight, helps make video editing easy and fun with his app, Game Your Video. With 100,000 downloads in four months, Game Your Video won the Macworld Best of Show 2012 in the Macworld iWorld Expo this year. Hi, this is Monish Rana from Tech Solutions. Topic being business alliance between Indian telecom companies and India-specific mobile developers. Founded by Monish Ravindure Rana and Akshay Shah, Tech Solutions app TS Lendain Khata is a boon for the one-man business. The app helps solve the chronic problem of cash flow in credit sale transactions by sending automatic SMSs to customers for outstanding balance. In this way, individual follow-ups for payments from customers are not required. Not just for the retailer, this mobile app helps customers shop with cash via a prepaid account via SMS. 
Hi, I'm Tej Pandey, co-founder of Mobiotics. I'm here to discuss with Dr. Jay Menon about his perspective on shift in media content consumption scenario in India from TV to other screens. Founded in 2011 by Tej Pratap Pandey and incubated at IM Ahmedabad, Mobiotics app TV Buddy acts as a TV companion platform. TV Buddy lets TV service operators and content providers manage their subscribers and monetize their user base by offering subscriber management and an interactive telecommerce platform. This mobile and web-based app also allows viewers to discover programs and recommend shows. Aimed at the social media savvy, the app allows viewers to interact and share content on the basis of check-ins. Hi, I am Farhan from SKND by DX Software Private Limited. Developed by Mohammed Farhan, a software engineer and mobile app developer at DBYDX Software, TechSlater is quite literally an ultimate all-in-one scheduler. Catering to busy professionals, TechSlater schedules SMSs, emails, calls, Facebook posts and even tweets for a future date and time. Currently available for BlackBerry smartphones, the app has over 1 lakh active users and will soon be available on the iPhone and Android. Hi, this is Sunita, AVP Marketing with Diaspark INC. I'm here to discuss with Jay Menon about enterprise mobility scenario in India. Developed by Sunita Kishnani and Harish Shinde, catalog to go gives sales representatives real-time access to their company's product catalog. Available on tablets, catalog to go lets employees search for products within a price range, manages security and access permissions, and allows faster order entry, giving the sales force an edge over competition. The app also helps companies go green by eliminating paper catalogs. Well, now it's time to cut across to our masterclass at the Lalit in New Delhi, where Shruti and six young entrepreneurs are in conversation with Bharti's Jay Menon. The telecom industry is really on the crossroads, you know. Though there has been a steady increase in the subscriber base, we have over 900 million mobile users today, but there has actually been a steady decrease on the average revenue per user of the companies. So would you agree that the, the true future of the telecom industry might lie uh, with enterprise customers? Well, the exciting part about the telecom industry is that uh, it appeals to all three segments in, of customer bases, which is a large mass of consumers, sure. the smaller medium businesses and the large enterprises. Our industry is fundamentally morphing itself. As we transition from voice to data, as we go all IP, we are finding that there are opportunities that will create more relevance, more stickiness, and more value across all segments. So I think it's not a linear equation. Uh, it is a multidimensional opportunity, mm -hmm. which fundamentally says there is still a lot, long way to go, and uh, really bodes very, very well for all three segments and hence our industry. All right, you know, so according to recent reports, the enterprise mobility market is in India is growing at 45% CHIR and will have 130 million smartphone uh, equipped, you know, population. Right. We are seeing a lot of momentum in the enterprise mobility market, but the adoption is really sluggish. What according to you is the reason and what really needs to, you know, make this adoption more faster, more quicker? I think that's a ex very relevant point. Um, just, mobility. Just to, just to yes. add on yeah. to Sorry. you know yeah. what Shruti is saying, uh, we carry an enterprise mobile product. Now, when we talk to the customer, he appreciates the concept. But when it comes to implementation, you know, uh, it takes a long shot because uh, it, the product is about cataloging. So they are not even into digital catalogs. So for them to bring on to the mobile device and then the tablet, you know, it's a long shot. Enterprise IT in India also. Uh, took a little bit of little while to take off and now we're seeing in India large enterprises having very sophisticated IT shops no doubt about it when it comes to enterprise mobility there are really two problems to be solved first is on the device itself and second is on the server side on the device today there is a genuine need for MDM which is all about mobile device management what is really needed for enterprise mobility to take off is containerization once containerization comes in and you're able to logically take your device and partition it into two parts, a personal part and your enterprise part, effective containerization will result in greater adoption of enterprise mobility. That's on the device side. On the service side, you've got all your legacy enterprise applications that are running today. What you need is an agile server technology that will talk to your existing enterprise applications, which will then convert it into a form that is consumable by MDM. 
and devices. So the reason why enterprise mobility adoption is a bit slow today is because both problems need to be solved. One, the device side with effective MDM, and two, the server side with lightweight server enhancements to your legacy enterprise applications. There is a lot of talk about the Indian mobile ecosystem, you know, which stage are we really at? And, you know, as compared to these startups, the mobile players are fairly big. So what is the kind of telco developer relationship that you see currently is in play? And how do you see it evolving in the future so that it benefits the both of them? There are two forces that need to align, first of all. What is it that the end user or consumer is looking for? And what is it that the developer is looking for? Two forces need to align. What the consumer is looking for is something very simple. First, is it relevant? Will it make a difference in my life? Two, does it protect my privacy? There are apps that suck out information from your device, contacts, SMSs, fo photos, etc. So is, does it protect my privacy? And third, is the app transparent? In other words, am I being charged spuriously? Will there be another piece of software that will come in as a Trojan horse sit on my device? Will it actually really create a back-channel data traffic for which I have to pay for? The developer, such as yourselves over here, you're looking for three things. You're looking to make sure that, first and foremost, it is an exciting experience, user experience. The second thing that you're looking for is to make sure that it's discoverable, because there are hundreds of thousands of apps. I mean, you take all the app stores put together, it's in the millions. How do you discover an app? How do you make sure your app is discovered? So discoverability is very relevant to you. And the third aspect is analytics. You want to make sure your apps are smart and you do things that are relevant at that point in time for the consumer, right? Now, both these two things have to align. So you can't do analytics at the expense of privacy and transparency. So, so there's one force which is getting the developer community and the user to align on their objectives. Then comes in the vehicle such as the operator. So I think you'll see all these forces coming together and you'll see operators playing a far more um, open, uh, exciting and, if I may, uh, a more uh, stimulating role to promote the whole developer community. Moment monetization model is restricted to credit cards. It's only restricted to that part of the Venn diagram. What the operator gives you is expands that Venn diagram to the entire base. Samsung Galaxy S3, designed for humans. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Baba Sahib Bhimrao Ambedkar is the greatest Indian. It's the story of the greatest Indian, who learned at school that he was untouchable. But he turned life's lessons into strength. Intellectual, freedom fighter and Dalit icon. The true champion of justice and equality. The man who gave India its constitution. Life story of Baba Sahib, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar, the greatest Indian. Hyundai E.ON, a Buana India on. Buy now and get free insurance, plus exchange or loyalty benefits. Hurry! Hyundai. Give me your fresh active. Get fresh. Once upon a time, a thirsty crow decided to quench his thirst. But he just couldn't reach the water. Then he tried something smarter and the crow reached his goal. So, Daddy hmm? is thinking differently, smarter. Always, son. Save smarter with recurring savings plan from Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.
Welcome back. You're watching our Young Turks tutorial. Now, Apple and Android have already mainstreamed mobile applications. Everyone, from techies to little children, are seen using apps on a regular basis. But getting users to use the app is one thing, and monetizing is quite another. So let's talk to Jay about the challenges of monetization and what we can see happen in the future. So let me first dispel some myths. Uh, telcos today are not about voice and SMS alone. In fact, we fundamentally believe in the shift to data. That's why you're seeing a lot of 3G and now 4G rolling out. Correct. Um, smartphones today, the lines between so-called smartphones and features phones are fast blurring. Uh, just about every phone today has color, has got a touch interface, and has got some sort of browser on it. The second, second myth is uh, that you are carrying in your mind is about a fixation on a revenue share model that's always tilted in favor of the telco. You will discover as you work more and more with the operators, the mindset has changed significantly. It's changed dramatically because the operator realizes that at the end of the day, there is no need for data if there is no compelling experience to use data. People will want to go to data only if there are compelling apps. So you all play a very, very important role from that perspective. You want more and more of the revenues, which makes a lot of sense. Operators want more and more of the customers to use data. I see a win-win symbiotic relationship out here. And that's something that's definitely on the cards. In fact, there's a third part of the whole equation, which is ability to collect cash. Ability, most of our market is prepaid. India is primarily prepaid. Now, not many customers will have a credit card or a bank account. The app stores, the OEM app stores, all monetize through credit cards primarily. So by the moment monetization model is restricted to credit cards, it's only restricted to that part of the Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. What the operator gives you is expands that Venn diagram to the entire base. Because the operator knows how to collect cash, how to then make sure monetization happens. And I think there needs to be a healthy co-creation between the developer community and the operators to make that happen. I know for a fact we're doing that both in the consumer segment as well as the enterprise segment. What opportunity would, uh, would you provide uh, to you know, emerging debt power uh, to facilitate monetization uh, for the, uh, of their application? So what is already live today, and we have an API, uh, which will, can be given, we have already given it to an app store provider, Nokia store. Right? So any app that's on the Nokia store can be monetized through Airtel's prepaid or postpaid bill. No credit card. Where are we in terms of connectivity currently in Indian app store space? Secondly is when will an Indian app store space achieve scale so that me as a developer can bet my company on the Indian app store space? Will connectivity improve? Absolutely. You're seeing this happening. The second question is when will it really take off? It'll take off if the consumer or the user can believe yes I know I'm getting what I really signed up for. Have you guys explored models where someone else pays for the data? So what I mean Absolutely. is, in Absolutely. SMS world, right? When someone wants to blast an SMS to you or wants to have a two-way SMS connectivity, the other party actually pays you. So here, if I take, again, I'm just taking my example and thinking from that perspective. What if the retailers and brands are willing to pay for the data connectivity because they're able to reach out to the consumer? Spot on, spot on. Right. So for example, imagine you're watching something on your smartphone and you're looking for automobiles. So the first page is what you pay for, or I pay for as a consumer. Now if I click on the photograph of the automobile, there's a high definition video that's going to be served. Now it's in the interest of the automobile manufacturer that I see the video. Absolutely. So maybe the manufacturer should pay for that. Right. Now therefore, what are we doing as operators to help that? Yes. We're creating APIs. Okay. If you're looking at other aspects about uh, uh, different hardware platforms which are currently available, maybe four major platforms which are there, and these are changing rapidly, hardly not even Moore's law. Less than 18 months, we see a mobile app which is changing, a mobile platform which is changing, and a new one which comes. So, looking into this aspect about uh, future, where is the mobile app's future going, say, less than 18 months from today? It's got a very, very bright future. Uh, first and foremost, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G are only just network access technologies, which has got nothing to do with the specific device or the operating system on the device. So okay. I, I draw a line between the two. Now, on the device itself, uh, the operating system plays an important role. Fortunately, we are 
not in a world where operating systems are further fragmenting. We're seeing more and more of consolidation in OSs, and you're seeing uh, iOS, Android, Blackberry, uh, and to a certain extent, uh, Nokia is still there. And Microsoft's coming in as well, right? So, so at least it's not 20. Therefore, if operating systems are getting stabilized, and if app stores are getting more and more stable where upgrades are easy to find and, and updates can happen, then you're entering an era which was highly, from being highly fragmented into a little bit more structure. And because of the structure, we're gonna see a further explosion of apps taking off. Mobile internet has a lot of promise. Stick to your guns, partner more, and be bold. There are two ends of technology. One where it's built, the other where it works. From wind turbines that light up people's homes, to healthcare innovations that help save lives. At GE, we know our technology truly works when it works for India. 20 days. 20 cars presenting the Tata Motors 2020 offer. Buy any Tata car and you could drive it home for free. Also get cash benefits and assured offers on all Tata cars. Hurry! Offer valid to 31st August only. Terms and conditions apply. Fantastic! Rakesh! Asian paints Ultima lagaoge to log sirf ghar ke baare mein poochhenge. Kya aapko manzoor hai? Feroche sentati mi so de rakonta li. See, not a scratch. Of course. Now let's build a house that's as stunning as this bathroom. The vibrant collection from Cola. So stunning, you'll want to build a new house around it. Skoda Rabbit. Built for the thoughtful. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Baba Sai Bhimrao Ambedkar is the greatest Indian. It's the story of the greatest Indian who learned at school that he was untouchable. But he turned life's lessons into strength. Intellectual, freedom fighter and Dalit icon. A true champion of justice and equality. The man who gave India its constitution. Life story of Baba Sahib, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. The